All right, so you wanna add mods to your Minecraft server, but first there's some baselines that we need to basically lay out. First things first, you're gonna need a Forge server. This means it's a server that is using the Forge mod, mod loader, and we have a link in the description that uh, goes over how to do this. It's a massive video, it's 21 minutes long, but it covers everything you need to know to get a server up and running with Forge mods and get everything up and going. Then you can come back to this video and we'll go over installing the mods themselves. Now I already have a Forge server started here, but honestly, this is the most difficult way to start a Forge server. The easiest way is with our company, Simple Game Hosting. Go to the first link in the description down below, the breakdown.xyz slash SGH to start your very own 24 hour DDoS protected Minecraft server running Forge. Literally, you just set up Forge with one click. You select it and check out and your Forge server is created. From there, you can add any mods that you want to it, assuming they are Forge mods for 1.20.1 in this case, but you can easily add any mods that you want to it. We have a one-click mod pack installer as well, meaning that if you want to add mod packs to your server, you can do that without having to download hundreds of mods and add them to the server. All you've got to do is get the mod pack locally, add the mod pack to the server using our simple installer, and then start the server and join it that easy. But if you do have any issues along the way, we're here to help as well with an amazing help center and live chat support to be able to help you out. Truly, Simple Game Hosting is the easiest way to start a modded Minecraft server, and you can check it out at the first link in the description down below, the breakdown.xyz slash sgh. Now, assuming that you do already have your Forge server up and running here, you can go ahead and move on to downloading mods. Now, we are going to be using Forge mods in this. Fabric mods are also popular, and we do have a guide on a Fabric server if that's more what you're looking for, but this video is for Forge. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and download Spark. Why would I recommend Spark? Well, even if you don't want to get Spark, you should get Spark. This is going to allow you to troubleshoot lag on your server. So in the description, we have a link to all the mods we're going to be getting here today, as well as just where you can find general Minecraft mods. But Spark is the one that everyone should have. Once you click that link in the description, it will take you to our guide on Spark. Click the download button and it will take you here. Once you're here, you want to click on files. You want to find the 1.20.1 Forge version of Spark, which as you can see is right up here. It's not the top one, it's the next one. It's the Forge version that we want for this tutorial. Click the three dots on the right hand side and click on download. Then the download will begin after a few seconds. Now it is important that you're downloading the Forge 1.20.1 version of mods. If you're not, it will not work for this video and for this guide and for this server that we are creating here. It's also worth noting that every mod you install on your server, every single person, you, your friends, anyone else who joins your server will need to install locally as well. So it's extremely important that you keep a blog of the mods you install, be it Spark, be it Biomes of Plenty, or be it another mod, because everyone who joins your server will need to download that mod. That is a benefit of mod packs, and luckily those are easy to get over at Simple Game Hosting. But if you do want to do a server like this, you need to make sure that your friends are installing every single mod locally in their mods folder, as well as you adding them to the server. But we'll talk about that more later. We do have a Forge guide in the description if you want to send that to your friends. Nonetheless, we've got Spark downloaded. Let's get Biomes of Plenty. Same thing, scroll down, click the download button here. Now, the one thing to note here is that uh, Terra Blender is required for Bombs of Plenty. It's not uncommon for Minecraft mods to have another mod that is required, so make sure to check the download pages for that. Nevertheless, at this point, we can go to Files, make sure we're downloading the Forge 1.20.1 version, and click Download File. Terra Blender is the other mod we needed, and the process is the same. Make sure we're downloading the Forge 1.20.1 version, Click Download File. Now that these are downloaded, I do want to go ahead and mention this, which is a link in the description down below. And this is pretty much where you can see a ton of different Minecraft mods on CurseForge. We can even on the left-hand side select Forge and select 1.20.1 to ensure that everything is compatible with the mod loader and game version we want. And you can just scroll and scroll and scroll here through hundreds, if not thousands, probably thousands of mods here for you to check out. But nevertheless, at this point, we have our mods downloaded. We can minimize our browser. Now, let's go ahead and add these to our server. First things first, we want to move all the mods we downloaded to our desktop. So let's go ahead and access those. They're going to be in your downloads folder, most likely. And we have the three here, Bombs of Plenty, Terra Blender, and Spark. Move those to our desktop, right like so. Then, go ahead and open up your server directory. In your server directory, you should have a mods folder here. Go ahead and open that up, and then drag and drop any Minecraft mods you want to install into this mods folder, right like so. Then come back to the main Forge server directory here where you should have a run file. This could be a run.bat file or a run file that just says Windows batch file on the right hand side. Double click on that to start your server. Now we're not completely done though, so we want to make sure that we keep this open because again, we need these installed locally as well as on the server. So how do we do that? Well, let's go ahead and open up the Minecraft launcher. And then in the Minecraft launcher, what we want to do is click on installations at the top. 
Once you're there, you should have a Forge installation. If you don't, make sure Modded is checked in the top right, and if Modded is checked, you don't have Forge installed, so you want to go through our guide, link in the description to get Forge installed locally in order to join your server. Once you're here though, you want to hover over your Forge installation and click the folder icon. That's going to open up your .minecraft folder here, where you should have a mods folder. But Nick, I don't have a mods folder. Well, guess what? I don't either. So let's go ahead and right click, create a new folder, and title this folder mods, M-O-D-S, all lowercase, exactly like that. Open up your newly created mods folder, and then let's go back to our server folder, which was right over here. If I can find it, there it is. We want to go ahead and open up our Forge server folder here as well, because what we want to do is move these mods over. But we don't want to drag and drop them, because if we drag and drop them, they're only going to be in one place. So what you want to do is select them all, right click, and copy. Then come over into your local mods folder. This is right here in the .minecraft folder and paste it. So you just have two mods folders, one in the .minecraft folder and one in the server folder, both having the exact same mods in them. Again, I cannot stress it enough, every single player, you, your friends, anyone else who joins your server, has to have every single mod that's on the server installed locally as well in the mods folder. So as you can see, we have them all here in our local mods folder. They're also in the server's mods folder. At this point, we can go ahead and play Minecraft using our Forge installation, and it's super easy to join the server. The hard part of adding mods is done. You've gotten the server started, you've added the mods to both mods folders, locally and on the server. Now you just gotta launch Minecraft and join. So we are on the Minecraft main menu, we can go ahead and join the server. I'm using localhost because that's just easiest for me, but obviously public IP address if your friends are joining the server and it's hosted on your own computer. Now, once we are in game, I'm gonna go ahead and start a Spark profiler. Now you may need to come over to your server's console and op yourself in order to use some of the mods commands so that's op and then your username but be careful giving this to everybody because they can do things like type slash stop that will stop your server if you hit enter with that but nevertheless let's go ahead and start a spark profiler so spark profiler and then start is the command for that because that is going to allow us to later on see where the lag is on this server and there probably will be lag i'm using an older computer to record this so nevertheless let's go ahead and once we're here we can see the other mod that we installed, which is Biomes of Plenty. Now, what's really cool is Biomes of Plenty does work on mod or on servers without any changes to server.properties or any other files. It's just world that was generated before this mod was installed, Biomes of Plenty won't have the new biomes. So let me fly around, generate some new chunks, and we'll see those new biomes. So here we are, we can see that we are in Biomes of Plenty. If we hit F3, we can also see Biomes of Plenty grassland. We also have these cool trees over here, which is a, uh, what is this, a mystic grove. So pretty cool stuff, and again, you can actually see where it was generated before this and after. It kind of just is a stark switch from non-Biomes of Plenty to Biomes of Plenty, but that's perfectly fine. That is A-OK, -okay because anything outside of the world that was already generated will have the new biomes. I wanted to find a bit more intriguing Bombs of Plenty biome, and I think I've done that here with the Evergreen Forest, or Coniferous Forest, excuse me. This is my favorite, um, one of my favorite biomes in Bombs of Plenty, so I was glad I was able to quickly find one. But there you have it. That is how you can add mods to your server. Let's go ahead and test Spark Profiler here, and we can go ahead and stop this. Oh, nope, not start it. We want to stop it. And then once we have stopped it, it will spit out a link. When that link is opened, it will actually allow us to see the basically data from our server and help us identify any lag. So you can see here what our TPS was. TPS should be 20. Anything between 18 and 20 is usually acceptable, which is the case here. Very playable, but you are having some lag because like I said, this is an older system. And you can identify kind of what the lag was caused by, which our CPU is a big benefit here. As you can see, system CPU is at 72% because I'm using uh, this recording and the server's taking 30% of that. But nevertheless, at the bottom here, you can actually dive into what the server or what is being used on the server. And as we dig deeper, we can see different stuff. And it can actually be dug down into individual mods as well. So definitely worth checking out, especially if your server is having lag. That's why I recommend having this on every single server. You can also click on the top here and see individual mods and what might be causing lag. Only Spark is the one that's causing the most in this case, which is kind of ironic. But anyway, we'll see you in the next video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more incredible content. Be sure to check out Simple Game Hosting at the first link in the description down below. The breakdown to XYZ slash SGH to start your very own Minecraft server with Forge and easily add mods to it. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.